This is a photograph that I took leaving Boston on the way here two nights ago. Um, for me, traveling in an airplane is remarkable. Uh, being able to have this view as a human being and also to be able to gather and convene a group like this is incredible. Um, and I think we need to like pause at that once in a while. Uh, I'm, I am un unfortunately or however going to talk to you about what is probably the worst customer experience that we've all shared this week, at least those of us who flew. Um, and I think that's, so get ready for that. Um, and I'm really excited to talk about this because it's uh, talking about work that's live right now, running in pilot form or prototype form. And I think, Mark, we can talk about that from the earlier talk later on. What do we actually call this stuff? But it's running as a live prototype right now in testing in Dallas, Texas. Um, there's a clicker here, I'm sure. Thank you. So, um, you know, as airline passengers, we love getting to our destination. Um, for me, this is my mythical destination of where I want to be most of the time. This is Hawaii. Um, we love to get to that place. It can be a meeting. It can be to see our family, our friends, our loved ones, you know, my grandmother. Uh, this is where we want to be, um, you know, connecting. Yeah. And, but this is the reality of this. And, and frankly, for most of us, um, traveling in an aircraft or moving anywhere through an airport is, is a pain. And, and there's data to prove this. So um, the, the NPS score, so that's the net promoter score. Most of you all know this, but for those that don't, it's basically how likely are you to recommend a product or service to a friend. So out of a, on a scale of 1 to 100, your 38% of people are likely to recommend air travel to a friend, and we, I know that many of us use that to get here today. By comparison, the Apple experience, all the things you do with Apple, those of you who uh, subscribe to the Apple world, um, they're at 72. Um, and to further calibrate this, telecoms generally in the United States are at 30. So if you've ever tried to cancel your cable uh, or your internet or renew a mobile contract or get a new mobile phone, this is sort of where you're at. So the airline experience is sort of in this range. Um, so there's clearly a lot of work to be done. Um, uh, as Marcella said, I work for Continuum, a de design and innovation consultancy based in Boston. Um, I really think we do our best work in highly regulated industries like healthcare, uh, government, uh, financial services, uh, and we'll talk a little bit about aviation in a second. Um, but more importantly than anything, we are committed to making things real. And I think the bulk of this talk is about how we make things real and the value of prototyping uh, and seeing things put into the consumer's hands. Um, this is, uh, to that end, we actually just uh, moved our headquarters in Boston and built a 10,000 square foot fabrication uh, and prototyping space where we fabricate products and services. Uh, we do theatrical prototyping, anything that we can do to get the products and services we're creating into the hands of the consumer as quickly as possible, uh, not just to see if they work, but also to see how we can advance the design more quickly. And I think I'm preaching to the choir here in this room. Um, we had the good fortune uh, last year of partnering uh, in a, creating a long-term partnership with Southwest Airlines. Um, Southwest Airlines is the most profitable and most flown airline in the United States. Um, if you've ever been in the United States and flown, you probably know this brand very well. They'd like to say that they're also the most loved airline, although I think we could argue, argue, argue that a bit and we'll let their marketing team handle that. I think what's most important for the work that we're doing, and I think for this context, is that Southwest Airlines has been an incredibly innovative company for four decades. Um, they were innovative, frankly, before that was cool, before that was really a thing. Um, and to be able to work with them has been really exciting, um, moving that forward. So just a second. This is Herb Kelleher, the chairman and founder of Southwest Airlines. I'm going to show this. There should be audio on this. I'm going to show this clip. This is an advertisement from 1982, um, just to get a sense of where this all started and where we can go. So I don't have a, the Texan draw. Sorry, He's actually, the here we go. I'm going to play it one more time. At Southwest Airlines, we want our passengers to spend their time in the air, not on the ground. That's why we invented the 10-minute turnaround. Our planes pull into the jetway, board passengers, and pull out again in 10 minutes or less. The way we look at it, the quicker you're in the air, the quicker you get where you're going. Kelleher here. You're going to love our Southwest spirit. Okay, so you're welcome. Um, 
I think what was really interesting about the Southwest turn, it was the, the, the attempt to make a 10 minute turn, which is to get the aircraft into the airport, uh, refuel it, provision it, and get it back out in 10 minutes. You, you, um, you could not possibly do that now. But at that time, the way they were doing it and the way that the system worked, it was really remarkable. And it frankly saved the airline. So back in the 70s, they were able to get just one more trip between San Antonio and Dallas, and they were able to overcome competition from really big players that were trying to push them out of the marketplace. Most of you probably, many of you probably know the Southwest case study, um, but this is the Southwest turn really helped them uh, advance. Um, but what was, I think what's great to remember about the Southwest turn is it was a win-win. It was a win for Southwest, because they were able to get that extra revenue, get that extra turn of the aircraft, do one more trip, but it was also a win for the customer, obviously, because the customer is able to get to where they're going just a little bit faster. Um, and so we're always looking for those win-wins. And in my mind, this is the essence of customer centricity. Um, this is what we're here to do. It's basically how do we do the best for our customer within the constraints that we have as an organization or as a company. So do the best you can for the people you serve within your organization's operational constraints. I think fundamentally, this is what we're all trying to do in most of the work that we do. Um, how you define an organi organization's operational constraints, it depends. It depends on where, where you're, who you're working for, uh, where you are, who are you serving. I think in aviation, this is a highly regulated industry. There are a lot of really complex constraints, and they've only been building over the last couple of decades. So innovating in this space is getting even more challenging, um, and that's the subtext to what we're, I'm going to continue showing. So, Southwest Airlines, they basically democratized the skies in the United States. Um, and it's remarkable what they've done and how other people have copycatted them. Um, I think you could argue that Ryanair, EasyJet, and a lot of these other low-cost carriers that you probably know are more familiar with have copied them. Um, there's still more to do. They're gonna, they want to continue pushing, uh, traveling to more destinations, serving more customers. Um, but the reality is that aviation has changed a lot. Traveling on an airplane uh, is much more complicated. There are more planes, um, there is more pressure, there's much more security, there's more anxiety, the planes are getting bigger, they're filled with more people. Airports are just completely mobbed and they're bulging at the seams. Um, many of you who flew here probably saw some sort of flight board like this, I imagine. This is navigation by spreadsheet. So you basically go up to the spreadsheet and you look to where your flight is and you try to figure it out and it's super complicated. And not only do you have to do it once, you have to do it 10 or 15 times throughout your airport experience. And at some times you see the information, you go to the next sign, it says something different and you question the whole reality, like are you even here? Um, <laughs> so yeah, two days ago I, was, I flew from Boston to New York, New York to come here. When I was at New York, um, I was going through security and a gentleman in front of me at security was going through TSA checkpoint, and the woman said, I'm sorry, you're at the wrong airport. I mean, this stuff happens all the time. People are trying to balance all this information. It's really challenging. So how, where do we go from here? Um, so we working with Southwest, we said, look, we're gonna talk to customers. We're gonna try to understand better what's happening to people. What are their needs? What are their values? Um, what's gonna help them help themselves in this context, because you're, it's not like you're gonna take away airplanes or take people out of the air. How can you help them uh, manage themselves a little bit more? So we talked to a lot of customers. Um, this is just a sample. Um, the interesting behavior that we noticed that came from almost everybody, everyone we talked to um, was this behavior where you get to the airport, you clear security, so you've gone through some of the messy stuff, and you have a rolling bag and maybe a backpack you're looking for a drink because they took your bottle of water away already. Um, you might have one of those neck pillows and you might have three kids. Okay, so that's an extreme case. But even if you're a business traveler with just a briefcase, um, we all, many, many of us, so I'm not gonna speak for all of you, but let's just hear me out on this. Basically, everyone said they walk to the gate just to make sure it's there, to check it, to see the number, to verify that that plane is gonna be there, that they're gonna be departing. So who has done this? before in their life. Go straight to the gate after security. Okay, the rest of you are liars, but <laughs> it's true. So this is an overwhelming, overwhelming phenomenon, and especially when you're at an airport that you're not familiar with. You're just trying to case the joint, and it's at that point where you say, oh, look, I've got two hours, I'm gonna go get a bite to eat, or I'm gonna get, buy a magazine, or I'm just gonna sit down and chill out and charge my phone. That's all fine, but the first thing most of these people did, whether they were business travelers, 
families flying with kids, first time flyers, is to verify the existence of that gate. And it's really weird, but it was overwhelming. So with that information, we identified some unmet needs that we really had to tackle if we were gonna change this experience basically between security and when you get onto the airport, the airplane. That's really what we were trying to uh, remedy a little bit. We weren't affecting anything that happens on the plane, and we don't want to tangle with uh, Transportation Security Administration in the United States. A lot of people are working on that, which I, you know, I applaud. Um, we're working just after that threshold. So one of the unmet needs is data overload. So we have, um, you have a ticket, you have a destination, you have uh, the uh, seat on the airplane, you might have a boarding group, you have a gate number, there's so much information. We do not have the space in our brain to juggle all of this information. It's crazy, what you need is relevant information at the right time that's contextual in nature. Um, the stakes are really high. So this is not like um, missing a meeting or missing uh, a play that you're going to with your spouse. Okay, you'll get yelled at or something, but um, if you miss a flight, there's money involved, there's pressure involved, you could miss someone's wedding. There are all kinds of things that can cascade from missing a flight. It's incredibly high pressure um, and we have, to, we have to understand that that's what's happening to people. And frankly, there's an information black box that's happening. The data is not consistent between all the people that have access to it. So quite often, you probably have experienced this where you'll get a flight change reminder on your phone in spite of the fact that it doesn't say anywhere else in the airport that your flight has changed. So you know that information long before even some of the people that work for the airline know, before some of the flight attendants and gate agents know. That inconsistency of, of information breeds distrust, and oftentimes it means that the human interaction that you have to solve that question, like is this real, is this real, um, those conversations are not very uh, warm and fuzzy. Uh, that opportunity for human contact is wasted. So with these things in mind, we tried to understand how do we leverage Southwest innovative spirit to make new changes in the airport experience for the 21st century? We're trying to think really long term and really big here. This is the company that back in the 90s was starting to make big fuel bets um, 10 and 15 years out to, to manage some of their investments. Um, they're trying to think long term, how can we help them with this? And the first thing we're starting with is just-in-time boarding. So the idea here is how can we, through contextual information that's pushed to your mobile device, to your life, to your person, uh, as well as all the digital signage that happens in the, in the airport, how can we get you to the gate right when your boarding group is about to go on the plane? Not two hours before, not five hours before, and certainly not 10 minutes late. How do we get you there just in time? So think about waking up in the morning and starting to get messages throughout the day if you opt into it. But something, a, a series of, of communications that start to nurture you to the gate so you get there just at the right time. So to do this, we built this whole new service uh, ecosystem, uh, communication system, digital signage program, all the things that would happen after security um, till when you get to the gate. Um, there was four experiential goals that we knew we had to hit in order for this system to work. We had to optimize traffic flow within the airport to try to move people away from one another. We have massive overcrowding in certain gate areas and other gates that are completely empty, and we can manage that with information provide relevant and contextual information at the right time. I think I already talked about this, but this was essential to getting this right. Um, streamline the operations to enable higher touch employee interactions. So in that moment where you can have a communication with a human being, let's have that be a really good experience by getting all the other information right. So you're not having arguments, and if you think about it, most of the arguments that you ever see in an airport are about the fact that people have competing information and we don't know what true is. Um, and the last is getting customers to the gate at the right time. So we, that's the, the ultimate goal for this project and trying to get people to their plane at the right time. So this is an early draft of the flight information display called the FID. Um, we're trying to create a much more, uh, much better and clearer hierarchy of information in the way that we communicate it. We're privileging the location. I'll talk about this more in a second. But more importantly, this sign knows where it is in the airport. So when you walk up to it, it can tell you what direction you need to go to get to your gate and how many minutes is it gonna take you to walk there. So if every sign could basically nurture you on your way, you know the, if it's yellow, it means your flight is boarding, you better start, better start moving. But if it's blue or uncolored, you know that you can basically move along uh, your journey. This is the network display. Basically, can, in this display, we can show every flight that's, this is data we have access to, every flight that's happening in real time, in the air, 
we can show where they are, and we can synchronize it with social media information. So this is a way to kind of show the entire brand in a single display. Um, there's lots of stats about how many current flyers are in the air. So at any given time, they'll have somewhere between 15 and 50,000 passengers in the air at one time, which is pretty amazing when you think about it. Um, this, is the, this is the mobile app, so there's uh, one of the key features here is we have a, a live cam that shows the gate. So when you go to the airport, you can just see, rather than going over and touching the gate, you can just see it on your phone. There's no reason to run over there and hurry. Um, it's, I know it's obvious, right? Um, and these are the gate signs. So here we're privileging what is the gate number, where do you want to go, what is the destination, and what time is it taking off. In smaller type, we have the flight number. To be honest, flight number is, uh, is airline-centric information. Passengers don't need to know that. It's basically jargon. So let's strip away all that stuff that the passengers don't really need to know and give them the information they do need to know. So we modeled this in VR, which I am show this because, um, although it's cool to use the latest technology, this is the HTC Vive, um, we did this because it's basically prototyping responsibly. It's using a technology that allows you to spatialize things really quickly and cheaply um, to get a better understanding of how we want to advance the design. Uh, I think prototyping responsibly is something we, we do throughout the design process, trying to get the most value of any prototype that we make. Um, and this is a physical model that we did after that VR study, where we basically got a 15,000-foot warehouse, mocked everything up, so that you could walk through it and we can put cu run customers through it in testing. Um, we created the mobile app. This is just a click-through click model, but it simulated what it actually feel like if we were pushing the relevant data to you. Um, and that's our client uh, for the first time using this system uh, in our space. So she's watching the FID, uh, the flight information display, and interacting with the mobile app as she's moving through the airport. This is just a quick fly-through of what that looked like if you were a passenger kind of going from TSA security um, to the gate. I'll let that run a couple seconds because it's kind of disorienting. I think I'm sick. Uh, wow, too close. Okay, um, so then we started into prototype design. We keep, I'm still using the word prototype, so the conversation that Mark uh, brought up early in the panel earlier, uh, his uh, talk earlier about what do we call this stuff? Is it a pilot, a prototype? I think that's really relevant. In this case, I think the way that we think about it is it's important that the client understands what the vocabulary means more than anything, um, and prototype they responded to. Um, we knew that we, if we were gonna do a live prototype in an airport, it wasn't gonna stay there forever. It was gonna go, emerge, be tested, and come back. Um, the notion of pilot, for example, felt a little bit too real and a little bit too, too scary. Anyway, this shows the Southwest turn. It shows all the different parts of the process that are happening. So this is an educational tool that we have in the new, in the new terminal so that you see the difference between provisioning um, refueling the, 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 the push at the, end of the, the, at the end of the turn. So we thought we were just going to get a couple of gates at Southwest, uh, at Southwest headquarters at Love Field in Dallas, which is a relatively small airport. There's 20 total gates, um, but they gave us half the terminal. They gave us 10 gates and they allowed us to install our system throughout. So you see all those little numbers up there, um, which correspond. Anyway, it's a, it's a pretty massive scale for a pilot. Um, a, and the first thing we had to do is make sure we had data that was going to work because we we're going to actually be putting real passengers through a functioning airport using our signage and our mobile app. So we worked with the um, Southwest uh, digital sci data science team to basically scrape all the data out of the production uh, information and put it into a sandbox for us to use to port to the digital signage and to the app. Um, and we also worked with a customer care team to make sure that the social media integration was working. Um, this was, a, as most of the projects we've talked about in the last couple of days, an incredibly collaborative effort with many different silos of the organization coming together. Um, this is the new FID, so you'll see an, another version of this in a second. Um, much clearer display. When it's yellow, it means you're starting to board. When it's red, it means we've changed the flight. Um, it's very clear, it's kind of heads up, and we're privileging the information that the customer needs most. Uh, and you can see the directional signage here on the right, um, telling you which way you need to go and how fast you need to get there. This is the gate status um, uh, display. So this is, at, before you get to the 10 uh, gates, you see this one sign, and basically it shows all the gates and what the status is. So I know if it's yellow, I need to rush there a little faster, and if it's blue, nothing's boarding, I can go charge my phone. What I really love about the language is we're trying to use Southwest vocabulary. They have a very playful way of talking to their customer, which 
actually gives them a lot more credibility, and so we're leveraging some of that, so there's some funny quips up there and so forth. Um, the number one question that a flight attendant or a gate agent has asked is, how full is this flight? How many people have asked the question, how full is this flight? It happens all the time. I've asked it a million times. Um, that's information they have. I don't know why airlines don't share this information, but it's a question that's often asked. So we've created a sign, this, one of this, the states of this sign basically tells you exactly how full it is. The benefit of this, if the flight is empty, it means you can stretch out, um, you, know, you can move around the cabin, uh, you can be flexible. That helps you board a little bit faster. Um, it's also true that if it's going to be a full flight um, and we need you to check your bag, you'll do that before you get on the airplane. That helps us push a little bit faster. We're trying to get that turn as fast as possible in a way that's comfortable for consumers. So this is the install. I'm just gonna rifle through a bunch of slides because I have another minute, um, which is gonna show video of the Southwest Airlines team, our team, a bunch of other consultants, and a lot of people from the airport coming together to do a one overnight install of our signage on top of the existing signage system. Uh, so we did this two weeks ago. This is running live. That's Pat um, checking something out. Um, this is my favorite photo so far of this work. So this is a prototype of our work in front of the actual FID. Um, you can see the, the, my, the kind of Excel spreadsheet, flight information. That this is the industry standard, the global industry standard for communicating flight information is shown in the back. I think we can do better than that. So um, I'm really excited about where this is going. This is real data too. So this is not Photoshop or anything. This is real flights moving, people moving through, through the airport, and this was installed overnight. So, and this sign happens when you get off the jetway at, if you have a connecting flight, which happens a lot on Southwest Airlines. Um, it tells you if you have a connecting flight, which direction is it in and how long is it going to take to get there. Again, really useful contextual information. It hits you at exactly the right time. Um, so we've been testing the hell out of this thing. We've been doing quant, quant testing, qualitative testing, um, and we've also been testing not just with consumers but with employees. We need to make sure that this system works for everybody that's in this ecosystem so that we're all on the same page. Um, and you can see Projocta and Jared from my team uh, interviewing a customer here. And I'm gonna show you a quick clip um, that just shows everything that's happened in the last two weeks. Tons of stuff, tons of people involved. The, I think the question here is what's next? So like most of the projects that we've been talking about the last couple of days, we're gonna keep working on it. We're gonna continue prototyping and try to make this real uh, and get this into more people's hands to really understand the system more. Um, I think that uh, my feeling here is that this is so much better than what's been established throughout the industry. To be honest, this stuff was designed three decades ago and more. Um, this is really ripe for change and I think there's a lot of efforts to change what's happening in airports right now throughout the world. So I'm hopeful that this will become maybe part of the industry standard in the, in the future. Uh, and I look forward to continued collaboration with this client uh, as we try to, I think, make this a really relevant experience for their customers uh, and makes it a, a much better day for everyone involved. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. <laughs>